Good morning and welcome to worship. This Sunday, we are celebrating the baptism of our Lord. And so we have the baptismal font in the front and center this weekend to remind us of our own baptism, that we are saved from the power of death and the devil and that our sins have been forgiven, we are washed clean, and that we have an inheritance in heaven. We will follow the order of worship as it is printed out for you and on the screens. Uh, we will open with the opening hymn and we will stand with uh, for verse 3. And before we sing the opening hymn, we will watch this month's Wells Connection. Hi, I'm Wells President Mark Schrader. As we enter a new year, it's only natural to reflect on the previous one and to thank God for the amazing blessings he gave us. 2022 was a year when a number of synod-wide events and gatherings returned after the pandemic put them on hold. One of those gatherings, in fact, the largest regular gathering of Wells members, was the Wells International Youth Rally in Knoxville, Tennessee, with roughly 2,000 attendees. We don't just want it to be an experience at a cool place. We want to equip them. Uh, we want to equip those that are called and those that are willing to lead them and, and deal with them at such a critical time in their ministry. In addition to the youth rally being back in person, so were events that show support for Wells Home, Joint, and World Missions, such as the Lutheran Women's Missionary Society Convention and Taste of Missions. To everyone in the pew, to everyone um, who gives offerings, gives prayers, sends a letter to a missionary, befriends a mission, anyone who does that, just thank you because it, it, it does not go unnoticed. It is so, so appreciated and I always felt like um, a number of times over the years, you know, that letter came at just the right time, you know, where you were struggling or having trouble with something and, and it just showed up and it's, it's super cool. So thank you very, very much. 2022 brought word of new ways that our church body is continuing to connect people who are far from God to their loving Savior. The first was the launch of a new world mission in London, England. Our God has been gracious and has given us a, a new life. I think the religious institutions that are kind of native to this country have lost their way in uh, a lot of senses um, and people are crying out for something more substantial. Also, Wells Home Missions announced the ambitious goal of starting 100 new mission congregations over the next 10 years so that we may, Lord willing, connect more people like Lauren in Atlanta to their Savior. Learning God's love and grace for you and compassion and forgiveness, it's freeing. It's freeing and it opens your, it opens your eyes um, to a whole different way of living, to, to live life and look at life from a completely different perspective. With all those potential new home missions, we will need additional pastors, teachers, and staff ministers to lead and serve those congregations. Wells continues to provide a high-quality education system that encourages and trains the next generation of called workers. They have opportunities to go out into congregations and schools uh, to shadow a pastor, to learn from a teacher in the classroom, to really get that hands-on experience so they can say, I love this. I do not think we can overestimate the importance of this place if we want the gospel to live on, not only for us, but our children and our grandchildren and for those surrounding us in our communities and world. As local churches serve their communities with the gospel of Christ, Wells Congregational Services continues to provide resources so they can faithfully conduct their ministry. Without having that understanding myself from personal experience to know what it's like to be in the military and, and what are the best ways that we can serve them, I think that's just helpful to have those resources and, you know, I don't have to figure it out myself. 
resources that help local churches connect with Wells members in the military, as well as programs that help congregations build a bridge from children's ministries and schools to church membership. The purpose of telling the next generation is help a congregation have a plan. When they come, how do we connect with them? How do we build relationships? And then how do we connect them with Jesus? All of these various synodical ministries work together to allow us to carry out our calling as Christians, motivated by the love of Christ. This coming summer, our Synod Convention will be held at Michigan Lutheran Seminary to approve our ministry plan for the next two years. Topics that are scheduled for the 2023 Synod Convention include addressing the pastor and teacher shortages. These include the announcement of a significantly larger graduating class coming out of Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary and new initiatives out of Martin Luther College for teachers. A highlight of this year's convention is the official declaration of fellowship between Wells and two new church bodies, Iglesia Cristo Wells Internacional in Latin America and the Obadiah Lutheran Synod in Uganda. In Vietnam, the new theological training facility for the Hmong Fellowship Church will welcome its first class of students. This training facility was built to instruct leaders of the Hmong Fellowship Church who served nearly 140,000 members with the message of God's free grace. It's clear that our Heavenly Father has great things planned for our church body for this new year. We may not yet know exactly what they all are, but we can be certain that wherever he leads us, he's able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death, trusting in his prey, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. So therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace and joy of this forgiveness sealed to us in the waters of baptism, let us praise the Lord. pray. Father in heaven, the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep us who are baptized into Christ faithful in our calling as your children and make us heirs with him of everlasting life through your son Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. May be seated.
attention turns to God's word, the scripture readings for this second Sunday after the epiphany as we focus on the baptism of our Lord. Uh, first reading from Isaiah chapter 42, as the Lord uh, through Isaiah the prophet promised to send his spirit on the Messiah, his son, his chosen servant. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I am placing my spirit on him. He will announce a just verdict for the nations. He will not cry out. He will not raise his voice. He will not make his voice heard in the street. A bent reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not snuff out. He will faithfully bring forth a just verdict. He will not burn out and he will not be broken until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his law. This is what the true God says. The Lord who creates the heavens and stretches them out, who spreads out the earth and everything that it produces, who gives breath to the people on it and life to those who walk on it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will hold on to your hand and I will guard you. I will appoint you to be a covenant for the people, to be a light for the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring the prisoners out from the dungeons, and to bring those who sit in darkness out of prison. And these are the words of our Lord. Second lesson for the second Sunday after the Epiphany uh, takes us to Caesarea as we read from Acts chapter 10. And Peter is in the home of a man named Cornelius and he proclaims how God would put his spirit on Jesus in his baptism. Luke writes in Acts 10, Then Peter began to speak. Now I am really beginning to understand that God does not show favoritism, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. He sent his word to the people of Israel, proclaiming the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went around doing good and healing all who were opposed, oppressed by the devil, because God was with him. And these also are the words of our Lord. I invite you to rise and stand. First of all, we hear the gospel acclamation from 1 John 2. It's verse 2. Alleluia. Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Alleluia. Gospel lesson for this morning, also the basis for the vicar's message from Matthew chapter 3, Matthew's account of Jesus' baptism. So we, then Jesus came from Galilee to be baptized by John at the Jordan. But John tried to stop him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, because it is proper for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then John led him. After Jesus was baptized, he immediately went up out of the water. Suddenly, the heavens were opened for him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and landing on him. And a voice out of the heavens said, This is my Son, whom I love. I am well pleased with him. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated in a moment and we join together in the hymn of the day, hymn 377. We would first invite to the front the younger children for their special message.
Thanks for coming up. It's good to see you in worship this morning. Now, you walked by something that's right here in the, the middle of the, the chancel. Do you, do you know what we use that for? Yeah, to baptize. It's called a, a baptismal font, and you can, you can take off the lid, and there's, there's a bowl in there that you can put some water in, and you just use, just use plain water, and then you can take that water and pour it on the head of a, a little baby or an adult and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And that is baptism. Well, this morning, we are celebrating a baptism. The baptism of our Lord Jesus Christ. And he had a pretty spectacular baptism. Heaven was opened for him and the spirit of God descended on him in the form of a dove. And God the Father then spoke from heaven saying, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And I don't know about you, but my baptism wasn't as spectacular as Jesus' baptism. Heaven wasn't open for me. God didn't speak from heaven. But there still was a a miracle that happened at our baptism. Because we all need baptism because we're all born in sin. We have a sinful nature that wants to do things that are naughty. And well, when the water is applied with the word of God, it washes away all of our sin. And so we don't have the, the filthy, filthy rags of, of sin, but instead we have a bright white robe of, of Christ's righteousness because of what Christ has done for us, how he suffered and died and rose again to save us from our sins. And so God looks at you and says the exact same thing that he said to Jesus. This is my son or daughter with you. I am well pleased. And so remember that God is well pleased with you and that all of your sins are washed away. Let's fold our hands and pray to Jesus Dear Jesus, thank you for the gift of baptism. It washes away all of our sin and we no longer have the filthy rags of sin, but the bright white robes of your righteousness. Help us to remember that our sins are washed away. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You can go back to your seats and we continue with the hymn of the day.
Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. The focus of our attention is on the gospel reading from Matthew chapter 3. Do you remember your baptism? Thinking that most of you probably do not remember your baptism because you were baptized as a little baby. But maybe some of you do remember your baptism. Think back either to your baptism or to another baptism that you've seen here in church. Even if you're sitting all the way in the back of the church, you want to make sure you see that little baby getting baptized. It's always interesting to see a baptism, isn't it? Even if you've seen many baptisms in your life. Well, our baptisms can't really compare to the spectacle of Jesus' baptism. None of us had heaven opened and the Father speaking from heaven. But something miraculous happened at your baptism. God was working. So as we marvel at the baptism of Jesus, let it remind you of your own. Scripture doesn't give us a lot of detail about the, the young life of Jesus. We have a, a few snippets, like when the wise men came and worshipped the baby Jesus. Or when Jesus and his family fled to Egypt to get away from King Herod. Or a, a 12-year-old Jesus teaching the Jewish leaders in the temple. Outside of those few instances, we don't really know too much about the young life of Jesus. And maybe that's very fitting because... Nobody really knew who Jesus was outside of his hometown of Nazareth before he, he left his home region of Galilee to find his cousin John by the Jordan. Now John has been preaching out in the wilderness for some time. And he has become pretty well known, especially for his fiery rhetoric. He's preaching about repentance and a baptism of repentance. And some Pharisees, those Jewish leaders, they, they came out to see what John was preaching about. And John refused to baptize those Jewish leaders because they did not show that they were repentant of the sins that they had committed. And now Jesus finds John on the banks of the Jordan River. And John is a little confused. John knows that Jesus is not coming there to get a baptism of repentance because he has no sin to repent of. And so he asks a question that maybe all of us would ask when we read this account of Jesus' life. Why is Jesus coming to be baptized? And that's shown in John's question that he asks Jesus, I need to be baptized by you and yet you come to me? And of course, Jesus has the perfect answer for this question. Let it be so now because it is proper for us to fulfill all righteousness. 
Again, Jesus did not come there to receive a baptism of repentance. But there's a couple reasons why Jesus came to be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. First, this acted as the anointing of Jesus. Maybe you can remember back to your Old Testament Bible history and, know, and you know that the kings, the priests, the prophets were all anointed with oil. Maybe you can think of the story of, of Samuel going to Jesse to anoint David to be the next king of Israel. He poured oil on the head of David to mark him as the next king of Israel. Or you can think of the book of Judges when God would raise up a deliverer for his people. It says that the spirit of God came on that person and then that person was able to lead God's people and to do miraculous things. Well, the Spirit of God came on Jesus in the form of a dove. And he was anointed as our prophet, priest, and king. Jesus is our prophet because he tells us the, the good news of the gospel and his word. Jesus is our priest. He offers himself up as the perfect sacrifice for sin. And Jesus is our king. He rules in our hearts and he rules over the events of history. This is why you may hear Jesus called the Christ or the Messiah. And Christ isn't some sort of last name for Jesus. It's a title. Both Christ in Greek and Messiah in Hebrew mean the anointed one. And Jesus was anointed by the Spirit of God at his baptism to fulfill the prophecy of the prophet Isaiah that we heard in the Old Testament lesson. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I am placing my spirit on him. So the first reason that Jesus came to be baptized was to be anointed to start his public ministry. The other reason was to fully identify with us. And as he fully identified with us as humans, that means that he had to take on our sin. As the apostle Paul says in second Corinthians, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him, we might become the righteousness of God. Jesus was willing to take on your sin. You know, your deepest and darkest sins. And while Jesus knows them too, and yet he was still willing to take on your sin. And to take your place in the punishment that was meant for you and for me. The concept of a substitute is fairly common in the sports world. A player will come off the bench to relieve another player if they're tired or maybe for some other reasons. But Jesus' substitution was a lot more than just a couple minutes on a basketball court. It was more like you were standing in a courtroom and before the judge and the judge was ready to declare you guilty of all the sins that you have committed in your life. And then Jesus barges in to the courtroom and says that all of your sin are his. 
He didn't do anything wrong. But he took your sin upon himself. The punishment that was meant for you, he endured that on the cross. He endured hell itself when he was separated from God. Jesus was also our substitute in fulfilling the law. Because we can't obey the commands of God. We can't even, we can't even keep one of his commands. But Jesus kept all of them for us in our place. His substitution is complete. So those are a couple of reasons why Jesus came to be baptized, to be anointed, to start his public ministry and start the path to the cross where he would be our substitute. And so John agrees to baptize Jesus. And Jesus was baptized right there in the Jordan River. Now Jesus could have been immersed, put totally under water when he was baptized in the Jordan River. And some Christian denominations will say that the only valid baptism is if you do it by immersion. Well, that goes beyond what scripture says. They'll point to a verse like verse 16 where Matthew says that Jesus went up out of the water. Now that's just describing what happened, not commanding anything. It could be describing that Jesus came up from under the water, or it could also mean that Jesus walked up the bank of the river. But there is nowhere in scripture that says that baptism must be by immersion. So Jesus was baptized and then heaven was opened and the spirit of God descended on Jesus in the form of a dove. And God the Father spoke from heaven to confirm that Jesus is the promised Messiah, the anointed one. We have all three persons of the Trinity here. God the Father in the voice, God the Son in Jesus, and God the Spirit in the dove. Jesus' baptism truly was a spectacular event. To be there on the shores of the Jordan River to see it. And our baptisms can't visually compare to Jesus' baptism. But a miracle was worked in all of our baptisms. Because we all need baptism. All of us have been born in sin. As Paul says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Not just some people, but all. And that includes the little precious baby who seems like can't do anything wrong. Even that, that little precious baby is, is sinful. Because we have inherited that sinful nature from our parents. Going back all the way to Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. But baptism washes away all of that sin. And that is a miracle. Baptism doesn't get its miraculous power from the water that is used. Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River. You could go to any one of the rivers around here or any body of water and you could baptize someone. It's not the water that gives baptism its power. But the word, the word of God used with 
that water. As Luther explains in his small catechism, for without God's word, the water is just plain water and not baptism. But with this word, it is baptism. That is a gracious water of life and a washing of rebirth by the Holy Spirit. The power is in God working through his word. The power is not in the water or even in the pastor who administers a baptism. Baptism is powerful. And so there are many blessings that come from baptism. One blessing is that it saves. Baptism does truly save us from the power of the devil and from death. Paul writing to a young pastor named Titus says that he saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The washing of rebirth and renewal is baptism. Baptism makes us born again by the Spirit. The Spirit works and strengthens faith in our heart and we are saved by faith. Another blessing from baptism is the forgiveness of sins. And baptism offers a, a great picture of the forgiveness of sins. Say you are working outside, maybe you're working in your garden or some other project around your house and you're digging around in the dirt. Most likely your hands are going to get dirty. And so what do you do when you're done with that work outside? Well, you, you wash your hands because you don't want that dirt getting everywhere. Sin has made us dirty. Sin is compared to filthy rags. And baptism washes away all that dirty sin. It cleanses us. You can remind yourself of your baptism, that you no longer wear the, the filthy rags of sin, but instead... You have a, a bright white robe of, of Christ's righteousness. Do as, as Luther says to daily drown your sinful nature. Daily remind yourself of your baptism. That you are a baptized child of God. Any final blessing that comes from baptism is the reward. The reward of eternal salvation. When you were born, you became a new family of your, a new member of your family here on earth. And in your baptism, you were born again by the Spirit. And you became a new member of the family of God. God adopted you into his family. A professor at SEM would always explain baptism in this way. At your baptism, you receive your true last name or family name. So for example, my full name is Caleb Paul Gustafson Christian. We are all part of the, the family of God. And since we are children of God, we will receive an inheritance, the inheritance of heaven, where we will spend an eternity with our true family, the family of God. Every time we witness a baptism, we are seeing something truly special. God is working there.
And no, it may not visually compare to Jesus' baptism, but that child or adult is becoming a, a dear child of God. Remind yourself of your baptism. That you are saved from the power of the devil and from death. Your sins are forgiven. You are washed clean. And you have an inheritance in heaven. When you read the baptism of Jesus, let it remind you of your own. Even if you can't remember the exact event, you still are baptized. Continue to live in your baptismal grace all the days of your life. Amen. Please stand. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and as the offering is gathered, please sign the Friendship Register and pass it down. Please rise as we go to our Lord with the prayer of the church. Pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially for the gift of your Son, 
through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Support all who spread the light of your truth throughout the world. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation to injustice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Merciful Lord and Savior, you have promised to be with your believers everywhere and in all circumstances of life. May the assurance of your abiding presence and your loving care comfort and sustain Amanda, daughter of Jim and Mindy Branning, as she faces and undergoes treatment and medical care. Remove anxiety and fear from her heart and, and lead her to have all confidence and trust in you. We also commit all who are sick and suffering to your tender care. We especially pray for Ron Blazinski, uh, Bonnie Zank, Brianna Rux, and, and Rosie Swan. Provide healing and relief according to your infinite wisdom and your boundless mercy for them. We join Jim and Kaylee Ellenberger in giving you thanks as they celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary. By your grace, they have come this far, and, and by your grace, they move forward together, sustain and defend them through all the trials and temptations of life. May they and all married couples find comfort in your presence, strength through your promises, and perseverance because of your faithfulness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. And now we join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We'll stay standing for the closing verses.
morning, everyone. Welcome to all of you, especially visitors and guests who may be among us this morning. As always, there are many announcements, the back part of your service folder. If you haven't, please uh, be sure to read over them carefully. Uh, you may be read uh, this Monday through Thursday in Chicago, there will be a Wells uh, a National Lutheran Leadership Conference expecting 1,300 people. And uh, I'm pleased to see a group of 13 will be going from our church to uh, hear a number of presentations and uh, participate in, in workshops in numerous areas of ministry like worship and, and evangelism and education, volunteerism, and so forth. So uh, we pray for God's blessings upon this conference and safe travels for our group. Also, uh, note the announcement about another Everyone uh, Outreach Weekend Seminar coming up on January 27th. That's a Friday Friday evening, and then the 28th on Saturday. We did do one of these a few months ago, uh, and we're offering another one, hoping that uh, you know more members who couldn't come in the fall will come to this one. I'm going to show a video right now. When we had that seminar last September 30th and October 1st, uh, Pastor Shinaki, uh took some videos, and he interviewed some of our members who participated, and they they spoke about their experience. So Peter will. I went to everyone outreach and one big takeaway that I learned was that we tend to overcomplicate our outreach. We think of all of our facilities and all of our planning and all these other earthly things where our savior gave us everything that we need without that in order to reach the lost. Uh, and how about the accountability? What pronoun do you see there again and again? I, not you, not them. I became all things to all men. Right? And one of the things I really appreciated from the Everyone Outreach seminar that we did was that our, we recognize that our church is really doing a lot of outreach already. And if we can open our minds and have a different mindset of focusing on the word, what we're saying as believers, and then how we're reaching the lost, I think we'll continue to do well as our church moves forward. When you think about outreach ideas at St. Peter, what has often been the response? Did he enjoy those changes? Then tell us that, right? But he's willing to make a change for the sake of the gospel. I think we would say that's a worthy, worthy result, right, for change. It's, it can be simple. It doesn't have to be hard. We just got to maybe get out of our comfort zone a little bit. You become like and do to win the Jews. Yeah, there's a lot of um, outreach in our church that I'm not aware of and that we can become more involved in. Um, it's an exciting experience to be able to reach out to people and to get involved in these. And we learned about them and it's a very um, fun seminar and opened up a lot of avenues for me to look into. I need to get together with the community and I need to get together with the community game night. So I'm starting one up and so it's going to be for everyone here and invite neighbors and we're going to just try to get as many people around. We're going to have a fun time. We're going to bring families together. Uh, we'll have adults playing together. We'll have kids playing together. It'll be, it'll be good, good time. Thanks, Peter, for playing that. As you can see, everyone who you know, was part of that eight-hour workshop spoke about it very positively, and my wife and I attended it, and it, it really went by fast. So we are really encouraging. If, if you weren't there on that, that Friday and Saturday, this is for you. And, uh, uh, you know, John Goot was in the video there making a comment, you know, you be a dude to be. What, what, what did you say again, John? Where are you? He was kind of, uh, I think, translating the Apostle Paul being all things to all people. And, you know, to the dudes, you become a dude. So you can ask him about that at Donut Hour. So uh, questionable translation for sure. Um, 
But really want to encourage you to please uh, attend that workshop. As, as, you're, as you're leaving now, the ushers are going to have uh, inserts in their hands. And if, if you're fired up to come or if you're thinking maybe you're going to come, please take one of these. And on the back, uh, we do need to affirm up how many will be there. Our Senate is willing to send one or even two more facilitators for the weekend, but we need to let them know you know, how many from our, our group will be there. So uh, if you're able to come, thinking about coming, uh, if you didn't come back in the fall, I'm personally inviting, urging each one of you to please participate in everyone outreach. Grab an insert on your way out. So uh, those are the announcements for this morning. Uh, God bless all of you. Take a moment right now to greet someone sitting around you. Mm -hmm.